You're listening to a highlight from One Nation with Dov Lippmann on Voice of Israel. Welcome back to One Nation with Dov Lippmann. As we're going to try to do every single week on the show, we want to highlight members of Israel's ultra-Orthodox community who are making remarkable contributions to Israel and the world after so much negative uh, publicity and press from just a small group that make a lot of noise. It's so critical to understand the remarkable contribution that's being made. And uh, today I have the honor uh, to be sitting in studio uh, with an example of such an individual. Uh, it's an honor to welcome Common Samuels, the founder of the Shalva organization, to Voice of Israel. Welcome. Thank you, Dov. Pleasure to be here. So we'll get right to it in terms of understanding what Shalva is about. What led you to start the Shalva organization? I have a child, Yossi, who was a, born in 1977. And a, at the age of 11 months, he received a routine vaccination at the local public health center called Tipat Chalav. And unknown to us and unknown to the public at that time, they had known about a particular problem with that vaccine, the batch. And subsequently, six weeks later, they actually canceled it in the whole country, but it was too late for Yossi. He became blind, deaf, and extremely hyperactive. Uh, Our life got flipped on its head. We did not know where we were going. And in 1977 in Israel, they were not quick on giving medical information when it was related to a problem. And I'm confident those things have changed since. Uh, And we struggled for a year, and we finally went to New York trying to find medical information about our son, and we learned that his optic nerve was paled, he would never see again, we learned his hearing was damaged, and well-meaning people often suggested to my wife to take Yossi out of the home and institutionalize him so that we can get on with our lives. And Malki used to cry would always say, God, I didn't take Yossi with my own hands. I'm not taking him out of the house as long as I'm able. But if you ever decide to help our Yossi, I will dedicate myself to helping other mothers, other families with those, with related issues of people, children with disabilities. I used to hear that from time to time after sweet people visited and said that to her. And uh, when Yossi was eight in a deaf school back here in Israel, Uh, he had what we call the Helen Keller breakthrough, where a woman who was deaf sat him next to a table and spelled over and over and over again in the palm of his hand, because he doesn't see and he doesn't hear, five symbols for the word shulchan, meaning table. So Yossi suddenly got it. He lit up. She went ballistic, and she taught him the rest of the Aleph Bet. And over a two-year period, an amazing speech therapist who heard taught Yossi how to speak Hebrew. Now he spoke synthetically, he didn't hear, but you could. he had a bit of a Cockney accent, but you certainly understood him. And now we had input, he had output, we had communication, and he turned out to be brilliant. The president of Israel, Chaim Herzog, Alab Sholem, visited him. Um, there was series on Israeli television about Yossi uh, called the Helen Keller of Israel, and Malki sat me down and said to me, I made a promise, it's payback time. And that was 1988. And in the two years later, it took me a full two years to find someone from my hometown, Vancouver, Canada, who would help Malki get her dream started. So you took the situation and the amazing, amazing story of the breakthrough with Yossi, and you started Shalva. What does Shalva do for other families in Israel? Well, let's fast forward 25 years. Uh, Today, Shalva, which means peace of mind, does precisely that. It provides peace of mind to families who are raising a child with disabilities in the home. Any family raising a child with a disability, regardless of what it is, is facing a severe challenge. And it's, it's just not enough to give them a minimal response. We set about to provide answers to the gaps in services so that The first program was after school. Rather than the child coming home from whatever school serviced him for his disability, at the age of three or four, he may well be coming home at one or two o'clock. Malki didn't want that to happen. We went through that. We know what it does. So we created a program, an after-school program, where today 
Some 250 children in three centers do not go home. They come from whatever school they go to where the government sends them. They come to us in the afternoon. They stay till 6 p.m. They have a hot meal, and they arrive home at 6.30. What that does for the family, it enables the parents, if they're studying, to study, if they're working, to work. It enables the siblings, however many there may be, to have the attention of mommy and daddy when they need it so that when this child comes home, he has a loving home to come to, and the parents have a loving home to give him. Remarkable. So it's, it's really a shalva, the peace of mind for both sides. The child's getting what they need in terms of the after-school program, but the families are able to uh, continue functioning. So you mentioned uh, there are three branches that shalva has today? There are three branches. There is one in Harnov. There is a second one in Talpiot. There's a third one in Gush Etzion. And the government six years ago gave us an enormous piece of land in the heart of Jerusalem next to Sharet Zedek Medical Center, which is no less than seven acres in size, and asked us to build a national center. I mentioned the after-school program, but the programs run around the clock with overnight respite uh, for mothers who just gave birth, me and my mummy, which would be from birth to one and a half. So we have programs ranging from birth, early childhood till six, after school from 6 to 21, evenings for young people who go up to 40 years of age. And we took the challenge, and we are now completing a 200,000-square-foot center in the heart of Jerusalem. It's a game-changer. There's no facility like it. It has a semi-Olympic pool, has a very large therapy pool, has a full-size gym, has an auditorium with room for 400 people because we do a lot with the children on stage and on drama. And it is an amazing response to a problem, and it is the appropriate response. I had the privilege of touring uh, the construction site with your son, Avi, and saw firsthand uh, what a remarkable, remarkable building this is going to be to help children uh, from throughout Israel and their families. Is there a way, if people want to uh, get involved to help with the construction uh, project that's going underway in Jerusalem, is there a way that our listeners can get involved if they choose to? Absolutely. That would be welcome. That would be vital. One of the key issues. It's a $50 million project, and we still are in need of the final $6 million. Uh, So every shekel and every penny will help. We have a website, www.shalva.com. Dot org, uh, any email sent to info at shalva.org, I will receive a copy of and I'll be happy to respond and we can take it from there. And I would call on our listeners, again, I've seen it in action and I've seen the construction underway. It's going to be quite a remarkable change uh, for Israel. One of the things that I noticed when I visited Shalva was children from all backgrounds. Uh, you know, you come from the Haredi, the ultra-Orthodox community. I saw children, can you talk to me a little bit about, or talk to us about the unity that's being experienced within the Shalva organization? I do want to just set the record straight. I've been in the ultra-Orthodox world for the last 46 years But until the age of 18, I grew up a secular kid in Vancouver, Canada with basketball scholarships on my way to France to study until my mother made a strategic error and asked me to visit Israel for two weeks. I've been here ever since I never got to France. But clearly, uh, what is unusual about Chalva is the fact that it's first come, first serve with absolutely no differentiation between a paying or a non-paying client, whether someone can pay or can't pay. We don't take money directly. And also regarding background, we take first come, first serve. Just like when I was in the States and I went for, with Yossi in the early years to a very large organization in Manhattan, they didn't say, wait a minute, he has payers behind the ear back of the bus. It taught us an enormous lesson that I knew anyway, but it reinforced it that when we bring children in, you know, everybody's blood is equal and anyone raising a child at home is struggling. So we never want to differentiate. So we have the entire, entire spectrum. And I'm talking about the most ultra-Orthodox to the most secular. And although it's a Hebrew-speaking program, when a Jerusalemite who speaks Hebrew and is a Christian has knocked on our door, we have never said no. And the same is true with a Muslim. Predominantly, it is a Jewish organization because of the nature of the population. But we've never 
said yes or no based on money or based on background. And I can tell you that uh, I've seen it firsthand in action. It's remarkable to see. I also had the privilege of having a daughter, my daughter Devorah, who volunteered and looks forward to continuing volunteering uh, at Shalve. It helps the families. It helps the special needs children. It helps the volunteers. Everyone grows as a result. And I think that all of us in Israel owe a debt of gratitude to you, uh, Kalman Samuels, for founding, you and your wife, for founding Shalva, to Yossi for being the inspiration uh, behind the project. I encourage everyone, if you want to contribute towards this new building in Jerusalem, uh, you can do so by going to the website or by emailing info at shalva.org. And I want to thank you so much for coming to Voice of Israel today and sharing your story with us. Thank you, though, for this opportunity. Voice of Israel, your source for news and views on everything Israel and the Middle East.